Today we'll be looking at pre-processor directives, what they are, how to use them, and just the general kind of syntax around them. They're a little bit more general C++ than the topics I've been trying to focus on in this playlist. This was meant to be mostly about specific Unreal macros or Unreal functionality, but I figured they're actually gonna be very useful and I've started using them in a lot of my templates. And especially if you are a Patreon supporter and you have access to the download files that I've provided through Patreon, just wanted to say, of course, a huge thank you for your support. It's greatly appreciated. But the main thing is that there are a few updates to the project I've made. So all of the different functionalities are now spread out into their own different maps. And just to streamline things and make things a little bit easier to read, I've started using, making use of a lot more pre-process directors. And it made me realize that these are actually going to be really useful for everyone to have like a general understanding of. So the class I'll be using in the demonstration today is just a blank blueprint. It's going to show some debug logs and I'll show you what they'll be doing. If you haven't heard of the term before though, the main idea around preprocessor directives, they typically make the source programs easy to change and easy to compile in different execution environments. And it tells your file to take the preprocessor to take a specific action at a specific time using some built-in syntax. So hopping over to the IDE, this is the header. So absolutely nothing has been done to the header. It's just a standard actor class, just so you know what we're working with. In the code file at the top, these are all of the examples that I have for the different preprocessor directives. So it's basically something using a keyword such as define or if, and you've got the end if to separate things out, and I'll show you that in a moment. So in this example, the general kind of examples that you see, they're not overly useful, and this is kind of especially the first two defines, the pi and gravity. These are examples you see quite often. And it's more for that kind of native C++ approach. But it's basically saying we've defined something within this code file. One is called pi, which is going to be set to 3.141 and so on. And then gravity is set to 9.81. Now, the reason that we do that is that we can then come down here and we can do things like printing the value of pi and gravity by just passing in those defined properties from the preprocessor directives there. Now, in this case, it's probably going to have been better to have created these in the header file as a constant float, but this is the kind of way that they're using. Another thing to really pay attention to the syntax is that we don't have any commas or semicolons here. They basically break as soon as you finish typing anything, you have blank space. They will break until it finds the next valid statement, which in this case is the next define, which has been put just below the pi, which is gravity. And then the one below this, and this is the bit that I've been using quite a lot throughout the projects now, is essentially reworking the gengine add on-screen debug message just so it's a little bit easier to reuse. And this is kind of using it like the more blueprint oriented print string. So this has allowed me to define just once the all of the values that I tend to use with the add on-screen debug message. So for this, we've got the key, the duration that this will be staying on the screen and the color. And then it's just passing in the string that I want it to show based on that print string function with the parameter that I've defined after the hash define. And below, every time I want to use this, it's very then similar. It's a very clean and easy kind of function call that we have here, which is just called print string. And you can see it very simply takes in the string values as it would normally. So this is one of the really handy things that I've found for just kind of explaining things and providing this project as useful reference material to people is having this preprocessor directive defined in the classes to allow for that kind of printing. I then realized as well that this is used a lot of times in other places throughout the engine, especially if you start going through the source code files, you find other things like just below we have if and then the end if for the platform. So this will do things like checking if we're on the PS4 platform, then we're going to do PS4 specific stuff, such as uh, running the PlayStation logo in on the logo screen, checking for the right kind of inputs, the DualShock inputs versus the Xbox inputs and things like that. So all of that will normally be housed in an if directive. And another example would be in a lot of the code files you'll see if, and just as an example as well, a lot of these are kind of all predefined. So if we type if and then platform, we can see here we've got all of the different platforms that we can do specific logic within. Now the reason that we use these is that not only will it do platform specific stuff, but when we're not running things on this platform, it will strip that code out. So it also makes the code that we're running a little bit cheaper in that way. And you'll see this quite often as well, that a lot of the code which has been provided and is specific to running in the editor. So there's a, an editor directive as well. So we've got with editor as one of the options here, 
all of that will be stripped out when you use your different build settings. So if you've ever packaged something through Unreal, you'll see you get these options here. So we'll go to package project and you've got just down here, we have our build configuration. So we've got debug game, development and shipping. Now the difference really between these is that when you have the development build, you still have some of the editor functionalities in, especially the debug game. You even have full access to the console commands and things. And then the difference here is that the shipping will have all of that stripped out. And really the way that that's done is by using these pre-processor directives. So it's going to check when going through the build whether certain things need to be left in that code. So you'll see in quite a lot, if you go through the Unreal Engine source code, there are a lot of sections which actually have the if with underscore editor directive there. A bunch of code inside of that and then the end if to say that you're bailing out of that editor specific code and basically all of that will be ignored when you use the shipping build so it's going to strip all of that out which means and that's why if you've ever tried it you get a much more kind of performant efficient builds from the shipping tool and it's going to be a lot smaller as well because again you're stripping out a bunch of stuff that you don't need so as i said it's more of a generalized topic i just wanted to show it because i think this is quite useful to know especially if you were building something and you were wondering how you might kind of do a multi-platform release how you account for different platforms and including or excluding things in certain ways generally going to be done like this uh, obviously it's not just going to be a comment you're going to put this you can wrap this around entire functions or classes depending on your setup we can have the preprocessor content wrapped around pretty much anything that you want and then put your main body of code inside of that directive like I said, it's also useful just to speed up your process a little bit. If you get a little bit tired of checking the G engine, the on-screen message, because every time that you tend to use this, of course, this would have been the original code. It's just that little bit longer and a, a few more things to, to type every time. And I figured that could be quite useful to know how to include this sort of thing as well. And it's basically just making a macro of this function, which is the standard function here, passing in the string type. So it's something to look out for. And another thing as well, if you're ever wondering, uh, so people have mentioned about using the console system as like a makeshift cheat system for their own game. But you'll find that when you go to build your project in anything other than debugging or editor, that that's going to be removed. And that's because it has a lot of the code, which is set to be editor specific. So if you really wanted to include that sort of thing, you could make your own source build of the engine, remove that type of thing from the source code or share that code and kind of reproduce it in your own classes, which didn't have the preprocessor directives, making it to be editor only available. So just before we hop back on over to the project, just to remember what we're expecting to see, we've got three print strings, one which is uh, just a simple hard-coded string saying simple print to screen, and then two strings, one saying the value of pi, and one passing in the value of gravity, printing out pi and gravity. So back in the engine in the preprocessor directive map, I'm just going to press play. You can see the top left hand side there, we've got the three messages. They're going to last for those 10 seconds. They're all in white so that we can see all of those values that I've put into the directive have been accounted for. And that's pretty much it. So that's how they work. It's not a huge topic. Like I said, this is more of a general C++ thing. This isn't specific to Unreal. You also see, see things like this even in other languages. In Unity, you can use the same sort of if platform type thing to exclude things or include things on certain platforms. So if you did want to know more about this, there is a ton of information already online about it. But if you haven't seen it before, it's something maybe to start looking at incorporating into your projects just to speed up your workflow and get an understanding of how they work. And especially again, if you come across them when browsing through the engine source code. So just to come back around to what I started the uh, the video on, again, if you're a supporter on Patreon, again, huge thank you. If you're looking at the updated project files and you're wondering why some of the code has changed or wondering where certain things are happening now, do check in the classes. I've pretty much reworked all of the classes so that they include these simple print strings using the preprocessor content. And hopefully a lot of it will be just a little bit more easy to read and understand and just a little bit more condensed when you go through it. So just wanted to mention that as well. Another thing to mention before finishing the video is that if you would find it useful to see all of this in text form over the coming weeks, I haven't got anything uploaded yet, but it's going to be worth checking out my webpage. All that will always be linked in the description below. I plan on creating a simple kind of blog style series of turning all of the tutorials from this playlist into kind of step by step coding processes on the webpage. So it's just devenabled.com 
That way you can grab the code or kind of look at things in a step-by-step -step process if that's more useful than following through the video. As I said, I'll include all of the code from the header and the code files as well. So if you just wanted to grab snippets of code, then that will be available there. And of course, all of the links to the documentation. I'm working on the first pages at the moment. The first few should be ready over the next week or two as soon as I get a chance to type it all up and publish those pages. So a slightly smaller topic than usual. Hopefully you've enjoyed this or found this useful. And of course, if you have, please do leave a like and share the video around. That is greatly appreciated and really helps the channel to grow, as does subscribing, hitting the notification bell. And that would just mean you're always kept up to date with when the latest content is released on any of the playlists on the channel. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.